So, example three, it's a Hooke's law. Okay, so let me just introduce the law, and let's uh, imagine something like this, that you have a spring right here with a certain object attached to it. We, we call this position the natural position. So this distance from the wall to the object, that will be, uh, we set x to equal zero for this point. Now what happens if we apply a force and we pull it? Okay, so if we pull, then now we stretch the spring. All right, so let's stretch the spring a little bit, like so. So that the spring now is farther away from the wall. And a distance, the relative distance, if this was the natural position or the natural length of the spring, we stretch it by this amount which we call x, okay? So x is the amount we stretch it, and Hooks observed that, um, Hook actually observed that f, the force, so we apply force here, is proportional to the distance, x. Okay? In other words, the more we stretch, the, the bigger the force. And he said that there is a linear um, uh, relation between the force and the distance, so that f is really equal to some constant k times the distance x. So this becomes a variable force f of x, as x is part uh, of the of the force. So here comes the example. And we have the following. The force of um, 40 Newton is required to hold a spring um, to stretch a spring from its natural position to a natural length to the, of 10 centimeters to a length of 15 centimeters. So let's write it down. A force of 40 Newton is required to stretch a spring from its natural length of 10 centimeter to a length of 15 centimeter. Okay? And the question is, how much work is done when the spring is stretched from 15 centimeter to 18 centimeter? Okay, so how much work is done when the spring is stretched from 15 centimeter to 18 centimeter. Okay. The, this is not a complicated problem. The thing is, uh, the common error is, is, is to uh, not to realize that the distance is given in centimeters, but remember the units that we're dealing with when it comes to joules and newton and kilogram and so forth, we're dealing with a metric system, so we need to express the distance in meters. And of course, 10 centimeters becomes 0 0.1.
centimeter and so on. But uh, remember, 10 centimeters is the natural position or natural length. So if you're looking at the initial stretch, the distance x will be not 15, as we stretch it from 10 to 15, but it will be 5 centimeters, or in meters, it will be 0 0.05, okay? And this will be our uh, starting point. Our starting point, again, the, by hook laws, uh, f of x equals kx, and in particular, uh, at a stretch of 15 centimeters, then x it becomes 0 0.05, so f of 0 0.05 is k times 0 0.05, and we are told that it's equal 40 newton, right? So what is k? Uh, therefore, k equals 40 divided by 0 0.05, or 800. And the unit of k, if you look here, the product k times x is to, is to produce Newton. x is in meters, so k has to be, has to have the, new, uh, the unit of Newton divided by meter. So now you have Newton divided by meter, sine meter gives you Newton. So uh, we check the, the unit. So now once we have the k, then we can calculate the work done to stretch from 15 to 18. Remember, this is a variable force, f of x, uh, variable force f of x, and f of x now, we can say it's equal k or 800x, and the work that done to stretch it from the initial position of 15 centimeters, 15 centimeters is 5 centimeters away from the natural position or 0 0.05 meters to a distance of a length of 18 centimeters, which is 8 centimeters more than the 10 centimeter, which is the natural length, or 0 0.08. And this is the difficult part, setting up the boundaries using the correct units, taking into account the most important, the, the important part, which is the natural length of the spring. You always, when you deal with elastic, uh, situation, elasticity or spray, look for the, the natural position, where you start when there is no force exerted on the, on the spring at all. Okay, so now we have F dx or F of x dx. Yes. In Newton per divided by meter. I did. That's why I'm using 0 0.05. Those are the units of the integration are meters. That's why I'm using 0 0.05. Those are all in meters. So I did, we did the conversion. Okay. So F is 800 x dx and at this point it's just the mechanic of integrations so we're looking at uh, 800 x squared over 2 from 0 0.05 to 0 0.08 Tommy is the answer to your question again meters and this of course is 400 times 0 0.08 squared minus 0 0.05 squared. When you calculate it, you come up with 1.56 joule. 